Correct identification of the experimental unit is crucial when designing an experiment. Incorrect identification can produce misleading conclusions. Let's look at an example to see why. Alex tells Mo about an experiment to investigate a new drug treatment for irritable bowel syndrome. Alex plans to give the drug to one animal and a saline control to another. 24 hours later, the water content will be measured in six faecal pellets from each animal. If the drug is effective, Alex should find a lower water content in pellets from the drug-treated animal. Alex says that measuring six pellets from each animal will minimise the number of animals needed for the experiment. Mo realises that there is a problem with this proposal and that Alex needs to consider the experimental unit. The experimental unit is the unit, in this case an animal, that independently receives a treatment, such that the findings obtained from one experimental unit are unrelated to the findings obtained from any other. Why should Alex not use six pellets from one animal? Mo explains that when deciding whether or not the drug is effective, the reduction in water content following drug administration needs to be compared with the background variability in water content of pellets from unrelated experimental units. This is accomplished by assessing the signal-to-noise ratio. If the drug causes a reduction in water content, the signal, that is much larger than the background variability, the noise, the observed drug effect is unlikely to have happened by chance. If the magnitude of the reduction is similar to the background variability, the drug has no effect. If the estimate of background variability is artificially small, Alex will conclude that the drug is effective when this is not the case. This is known as a false positive. Mo knows that pellets that have been taken from one animal are not independent samples. Their water content will be less variable than that of pellets from different animals. This means that the estimate of the background variability will be artificially small and less than the true variability of the experimental unit. What estimate of the background variability should Alex use? Mo explains that the experimental unit is the animal, not the pellet, and only pellets from different animals will be independent. It is the animal that independently receives the treatment, so any drug effect needs to be assessed against the variability of the animals. To produce six samples, Alex needs to take measurements from a batch of six animals that have all been treated independently. Alex can still measure the water content of six pellets taken from one animal, but should use an average measurement for all six pellets to produce a single sample. In a different experiment, pregnant rats are given the test treatment, but it is the effect on the pups that is studied. Because it is the mothers, not the pups, that independently receive the treatment, each mother is an experimental unit. In a follow-up experiment, the pups, not the mother, are given the treatment. This time, each pup is an experimental unit. The next experiment will investigate the drug effect in vitro. A single culture of cells is used to provide all the experimental samples for a 96 well plate. Each treatment group, drug or vehicle, will be studied in triplicate. Think carefully before deciding on the experimental unit in this case. Remember, it is crucial to identify the experimental unit correctly when designing an experiment. The number of experimental units is the same as the sample size.